Hey guys, welcome back. This video is going to be part one in a series about making a tracer attachment for the small hobbyist metal lathe. Anything in the range of, say, at least 9 to 14 inches I hope this plan will work for. As of right now, I have no idea if this plan is actually going to work out or not, but I'm going to show you guys the videos anyways, so I'm hoping for the best. The plan is to clean up a bunch of spare parts that I have from when I restored my lathe. I needed four or five things for my restoration, specifically the Logan badge on the front of the lathe, and then four or five gears that were broken and missing teeth on my lathe. I found an identical model for sale on Craigslist that was really rusted up and beat up, broken, missing a lot of parts, but really cheap for the price. And magically it had everything that I needed to replace on my lathe. Basically what you see here is everything you need for a complete carriage assembly. The saddle, the apron, cross slide, compound, hand wheel, various gears, cover plates, Aside from the lead screw and half nuts, this is pretty much everything you would need. The plan is to use this carriage to test the tracer attachment because there's going to be some modification and holes drilled in it, and I don't want to mess with my perfectly good working carriage that's on the lathe right now. The plan is to use a small pneumatic air cylinder to run the cross slide instead of the lead screw that was currently in here. So I think what we'll do is take out this piece make a different adapter that will mount to the cylinder and then can thread in here and this will be able to vary will extend this out past the back it'll ride on a profile of whatever you're trying to trace whatever profile you're trying to copy and then this will attach somewhere in here to the cross slide to be able to drive the tool on that profile so the first step just so these parts aren't so messy to work with I'm going to clean them up. I'll do it off camera. It's not worth seeing. I'm just going to use some industrial strength degreaser, soak them in that, get all the grease off, and then some citrus strip to get any paint. There's a few layers of paint you can see on here that's all flaking and chipping off. So just to get it cleaned up and easier to work with. Then we'll come back and plan out and start building some of the parts that we need. The first parts we're going to work on are a new adapter for this end and that's going to replace this piece that threads in and this is where your cross slide handle goes. We're going to replace this, turn a piece out of aluminum that's going to thread in here and have a flange on it so that we can put two screws back this direction and mount our cylinder. We're also going to take a scrap of cold rolled quarter inch by I think inch and a half and this is going to I'll probably just clean up the ends and it's going to go back here with a hole I'll probably drill it out put a piece of brass in and then drill that out with uh, the size of the extension that's going to go through here just as a guide and support for the lengthened rod that's going to go through that end So let me get this cleaned up on the mill and uh, then we'll go over to the lathe and start turning this piece. This is just a chunk of two inch diameter aluminum and the first thing I'm going to do is face off this side and then turn the diameter down to match this which is about one and eleven sixteenths I think. So we're going to face this and turn the diameter to make sh to match this uh, cylinder. This should be the final pass. While it's facing this way in the lathe, I'm going to drill a clearance hole, which I think is going to be 3 8 This is a 5 16 shaft, and I think I'm just going to drill a 3 8 clearance hole for that and also turn a register in the face of here to seat this. Mm -hmm. 
I've got this tool lifted a little bit above center height, so hopefully it'll clear on the bottom. And I'm just going to do this by hand, feed out a little bit at a time and measure it. Uh, we need a three-quarter register on here. There's actually plenty of clearance on the bottom, so I'm going to lower it down a little bit. Depth doesn't have to be that precise. About 15 thousandths deeper than that. All right, perfect. I'm just gonna rough this down off camera. Like I said, we're taking it down to seven eighths, which is what the threads are going into the saddle of the lathe. And I don't really have any specification over how wide to leave this shoulder, what's gonna be left up here. Um, it'll probably be somewhere between three eighths and half inch, cause it'll get a countersunk hole for like socket head cap screws that are going to thread into here. So let me take that down off camera and then we'll, we'll come back for the threading part. The last thing I'm gonna do before I start threading is put a small thread relief in here. Uh, I just have a piece of high speed steel ground with a little radius on it. And we're just going to replicate something like this so we have a area to run out and stop our thread in. All right, this is all squared up. Um, the other part is 14 TPI. So we're gonna do a scratch press, make sure we're set right, and then start threading. Looks good.
The saddle itself is too big to bring over here and thread in. So I'm just going to go with the number that the Machinist Handbook says for a 14 TPI thread depth and we'll take it out and try it after that. So we should be on just one more spring pass here and then we'll pull it out and try it. Okay, we're back over here at the bench. Here's our threaded part. Register on this side. fits in there pretty well. And then this side will register the cylinder. So if this thread happened to work, um, let me show you what you would do if you had to get this back into the lathe and turn it down some more. Okay, I've got it back over in the lathe now. Um, the camera in a little different position, so hopefully you can see some more of the controls of what I'm doing. Um, I usually just use a little chunk of copper, and I'll chuck a part up if I have to put it back in, and then tap it with this while it's running, just real lightly, and usually you can make it run pretty true to how it was before. So you can see it's running pretty true, even though we took it out and put it back in. Then I'm going to turn the lathe on, wait till a number comes around, and engage the feed, and then stop the lathe. And then I'll turn it on a little bit until I get to the tool in front of the threads. And then you just want to use the cross slide to bring it in and the compound to adjust the angle so that you fit your tool back into one of the grooves and it perfectly lines up. So if it's a little bit one way or the other, use the, use the compound to adjust that. Just feed it straight in with the cross slide. Use the compound if you need to go a little bit forward or a little bit backward until you have it fit in there nice. Then you want to re-zero your cross slide this number doesn't necessarily mean thread depth like it did before when you started. So don't necessarily go off of this as an exact number. But then you can disengage the half nut lever and back this guy out, bring it back into zero. I'm not actually gonna do it, I'm gonna leave it 100 out. But then if we turn it on, engage at a number, you'll be able to see that this goes along and feeds perfectly with the thread, the old thread. So that's how you would do it if your thread was a little bit too large still and it didn't fit into your part and you needed to take more off of it. Now we need to put our holes in this part in order to attach the air cylinder to it. So I've got this fully threaded in and I want this fitting to point pretty much straight down. So I'm just going to put a little mark on these parts so that I can unthread them and line them up. This adapter fits almost perfectly flush with this, the edge of this square on both sides. So I'm just going to measure in from here and approximate the center of this 
bolt circle. Somewhere like that. And then scribe it onto this. These are just going to be clearance holes for 1032 bolts. So I'm, I'm going to drill them over a little bit because the fit is not all that precise. I drilled these two holes over at the drill press because it was just as easy to do it over there. And now I'm just going to use the same drill bit, uh, 1364 and line it up here on the mill so it goes straight through the hole and then we'll swap it out for a 3 8 end mill and countersink this so that we can use a 1032 socket head cap screw. Here's the finished adapter. And I just cut the two screws to length. I think I'm going to end part one right here before this video gets too long. But be sure and come back and check out the next couple videos where we finish up the tracer attachment and finally test it out.